Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignertechtips.com. Well we had a question, we recently did a video about creating a frosted glass type background. We did it on a section for the video. And I had a comment on that video saying somebody says it doesn't work on a blurb module. Well I've just tried it out, it seems to work absolutely fine. So I'll show you how to do it and hope, hopefully that will fix your problem. Now we're going to do a little bit of coding for this today, but don't let that put you off. Any code I write, I'll put below the video and you're welcome to use it. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. And let's go down and we'll create another section. I'll make it a regular section. I'm going to put three columns in it. And obviously I'm going to put a blurb module in there. I'm going to leave that just like it is for the moment and we'll delete this top section, get it out of the way. Okay, well let's go ahead and put an image in the background of our section up here. Blue tab for a section, green tab for a row, dark tab for a module. So I'm going to go into the section, a little cog. I'm going to go down to background. We've got color, gradient, image or video if you want to put a video in there. I'm going to use an image use something with a bit of detail in the background we'll use that butterfly picture again okay well, let's go into our blur module now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an icon rather than an image I'll leave the text just like it is obviously if you want to put your title in and content there do so I'm going to go down to image and icon I want to use an icon and we can choose from any of these elegant themes type icons down here as you can see that's popped that in there okay while we're here I'm going to give it a white background so down one if you want to link the module you can link the title and the actual module set separately if you want to so you can have two links best practice always is if you're linking off your own site to somebody else's site open it in a new tab if you link into your own site leave it in the same window so I'm going to go down the background I'm going to give it a simple white background. And there it is right there. How attractive is that? <laughs> That's okay. We're going to fix everything. All right. Well, I'm going to go design now. And I'm going to pop everything in the middle. And there we go. I want to give it a bit of space around it because it's all squished up against the side there. So let's go down to spacing. I'm going to give it 30 pixels all around. Just put in the number. It'll put in the pixels for you. Hit the chain. It'll do the opposite side. And we'll do the same for left and right. Okay, great. So now if I go back to the content, we can take the background opacity or transparency, see-throughness down, so it, it becomes sort of see-through. So if you just click on the color box itself, right-hand slider here, pull this down, and you'll start seeing the image coming through. Now take it down to about where you want it. You can see enough of the image. And that's kind of nice. But it's not blurred, it's not kind of frosted, it's just sort of transparent or opaque. And we want to make it frosted. So to do that, we need to add a bit of code, and this is where the CSS comes in. So we're going to go over to the Advanced tab, down to Custom CSS. And in the actual main element itself, main element, this is where we're going to write our code. And I'm going to be using Backdrop Filter CSS and you may get a little flag with the Divi here that it, it doesn't recognize it, but it does. It actually works fine. I personally tested it on Google Chrome, Firefox, Brave and Explorer. And I had a report from somebody down below. They tested it on Safari and it worked fine. So it should be OK. OK, well, it's backdrop filter. And there is it prompted us. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to put a colon. And here we can set what we want the filter to do. I want it to blur, B L U R. And then we'll open some round brackets. Inside there, we'll put the amount that we want it to blur. So if I say 10 pics, you can see that sort of butterfly is kind of blurred out at the back there, which is great. If you want it less blurry, put a less amount in, let's say 6 pics. And it's not quite as blurred, it's still a bit blurred. So adjust your blur amount of blurredness <laughs> with that right there. 
After that, I want to put a little semicolon. Now I'm actually going to copy this and we'll make it compatible with other browsers by using the WebKit. So I'm going to copy that and here's that flag that I said, unknown property backdrop filter, like I say, and as you can see, it's working fine. So I'm going to add dash WebKit dash and then I'm going to paste that bit of CSS in there. That'll make it compatible with more browsers. And we're pretty well good to go there. You can go in and adjust things to make it more visible. Uh, for instance, I could actually take that background down even a little bit more in opacity. Something like that. And now what I'll go and I'll go to the design now. I'll change the color, the image and icon. And I'll do the same for the text down below. And that's quite nice. And if you wanted to, obviously, you give it rounded corners. Let's give it a few rounded corners. So go into border, rounded corners. Let's give it sort of 10 pixels or something. Just round off those corners slightly. And we're good to go. So yeah, it does work perfectly with the blurb module. Let's just clone this a couple of times. And we'll put one over there and we'll pop one over here. doesn't matter which one we drag over. They're all exactly the same. And as you can see, that seems to have done the trick nicely. I mean, we could make that uh, background image fixed position. Well, they actually call it. We'll turn the parallax effect on and true parallax. It moves at a different speed in the front and it, it is actually moving but i'm going to use what they call css parallax i'd call it fixed background where it stays there just makes it a little bit more dramatic but as you can see it's given that nice little frosted background but you can see it through there but it's kind of blurred out a bit save our changes make sure this is going to work on the front end and exit the visual builder and there we go that's working fine on the front end now so I'm not quite sure what the problem was that that you were having with this but that's the way to do it to give your little blurb modules a frosted background so I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful and I hope that sorted out that problem you have if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.